Let's talk about bone grafting. If you're going to do any type of implant surgery, you must know how to bone graft. Even with small laminar implants, you must know how to bone graft and use resorbable collagen membranes. And we're going to talk about different situations and what's to be used in those situations. The bottom line is our, our big choices or the most common choices are either freeze-dried bone or platelet-rich fibrin. So let's review those. I do a lot of full mouth extractions with small laminar implants supported removable uh, full and partial denture. And when you remove the teeth, I've got a technique for placing the implants at the time of tooth extraction so you don't have to wait three to six months for healing before you place the implants. If you, if you don't place them at the time of extraction, the case just goes on and on and the patient has to wear just an upper denture for the three to six months while the alveolus is healing before you place the implant. So it's handy if you can place the implants at the time of healing, which I've done here. And you can see the threads are under the alveolar bone. And we've got these cases that we talk about the full implant supported uh, removable denture case. I'm actually giving a seminar on that in Dallas. November 2019. So this is Maxius uh, corticocancellus freeze-dried bone or BIOS which is sterile cancellus uh, freeze-dried bone. So we've got small particle size and large. If it's large I use the BIOS. If it's small I use the Maxius. But BIOS has a small particle size too that's very good. So we're mixing this with sterile water and placing it in the sockets around the implants. Now it's very important that these implants are stable in the socket. Then you place, this is just freeze-dried bone and we've mixed it with sterile water, sterile saline. See it's taken up all the space around the implant because when the tooth comes out and you place the implant in the socket, there's going to be space around it where the tooth was extracted. Then I'm going to use Contour Adapt Resorbable Collagen Membrane. What I'm looking for in a resorbable collagen membrane is I want one with no memory. I don't want a starch shirt. When it gets wet, I want that membrane to conform to the bone graft or wherever I place it in the mouth. And this is a very good one. So you can see I've just poked holes in the Contour Adapt resorbable collagen membrane then put it to place to cover the bone graft. The reason you want a resorbable membrane, it gives the bone a head start in healing. If you don't place a membrane, the soft tissue is going to heal and grow before the bone. So this is a barrier that keeps the soft tissue from growing into the bone graft and it gives the bone, the osseous tissue, about a three month head start on the soft tissue so bone is around these implants and not soft tissue. So with suture you don't have to have absolute primary closure and when you do suture it's going to look a little gnarly in the beginning but you want to be sure just the top of each of the implants shows after you sutured. Now here we're doing the same thing on the bottom and see the threads are under the crest of the alveolus in the sockets. Then I'm using the same freeze-dried bone mixed with sterile saline. Then we're placing the collagen membrane and suturing just like we did on the top. This is after three months of healing, the maxillary implants. And here are the mandibular implants after three months of healing. Okay, so that's using only freeze-dried bone and resorbable collagen membranes. This woman lost a big bridge right here and you can see the teeth are decayed. We're going to place a lower removable implant supported by small laminar implants. You can see how thin this ridge is. So I'm just I'm going to build this ridge out and give, my, give me more horizontal width for those implants. So I extracted the teeth, reflected the tissue, and then I'm going to flatten this ridge so that it's got horizontal width 
for implant placement. Then I've placed my small implants. You can see a little fenestration right here and a little fenestration right here. So I'm going to graft that. And in this case, I'm going to use the patient's bone with this bone scraper. I'm going to harvest some and then mix it with BIOS, freeze dried bone. So these are the two mixed together and you harvest that bone off of the chin. Just reflect enough tissue that you can harvest that bone with the bone scraper down here on the chin. Now before you place the bone graft, you must perforate the cortical plate and get into the trabecular bone where the blood supply is. So I've done this with just a 33 carbide burr. You can see the holes. If you don't do that, the bone graft won't take. It's got to have contact with the blood supply. So I'm, going, I'm making these holes on e either side of the implants. See here? And then I'm placing my freeze-dried freeze bone mixed with the patient's own bone. And then here's my collagen membrane suture. And this is after three months of healing. You can see the width. This is before and this is after. The width we've gained here on the facial. See this little thin ridge and now we've got, you want at least a millimeter of bone surrounding each implant. Another full mouth extraction with implant supported dentures, just a bunch of decayed teeth and we're going to use platelet rich fibrin in this case. This is a dental minute video on how to make PRF and that's the title, how to make PRF and it shows how to perform a phlebotomy and how to make platelet rich fibrin. So refer to that. It's a very good four minute video, video on uh, PRF utilization. So once it's spun down, you cut this yellow part, separate the yellow part from the blood clot, place it on the perforated tray, and then put the lid on top of it and it compresses that PRF so that the serum flows out into the bottom of the tray. And you can draw this serum and it's also full of growth factor just like the PRF is. That's the benefit of the PRF. It's full of growth factor and makes the bone very dense and heals fast and uh, just a wonderful material for grafting. So what we've done here is mix the PRF with freeze-dried bone and we mix it with the serum. This, rather than sterile saline, we're mixing the PRF and the freeze-dried bone with the serum extracted from the PRF when the tray was placed on top of it and compressed it. So here's the freeze-dried bone mixed with the PRF after the implants are placed. And then we also place PRF on top of the freeze-dried bone and it's used as a membrane. You don't have to use a co resorbable collagen membrane if you use PRF. You can use the PRF itself as a membrane. Then suturing that, again, just the tops of the implants need to be showing. You can see it's not primary closure. You don't have to have primary closure. Then here's the mandible. Same thing, place the implants. You can see their, their space because I place the implants at the time of tooth extraction. There's wonderful cortical bone at the apices of those sockets that really stabilizes these small lamer implants. <coughs> so you've got to drill through the, the apex of the socket into that cortical bone to stabilize the implant, but they're very stable. Then here's the PRF, drawing the serum, mixing it with the freeze-dried bone, and I'm cutting up that PRF in the freeze-dried bone with the scissors, and then placing it, you can see the pieces of PRF mixed with the freeze-dried bone, and plugging it around those implants by placing the implants at the same type of to time of tooth extraction, you're saving the patient about three to six months. They, they can get on with the fabrication of the final denture supported by the implants because you can't load the implants until the bone has grown, until the the implant, the bone has osseointegrated into the implant. So if you place the implant at the time of extraction, that process begins. If you wait until the bone has healed, until you place the small laminar implants, then you have to wait an additional at least three months. So here's the PRF as a membrane on top of the freeze-dried bone. 
and then I'm putting a collagen, resorbable collagen membrane on top of that. And so you have poked holes in the collagen membrane so it's stabilized by the small laminar implants. So here's the collagen membrane. So we've got freeze-dried bone mixed with PRF, wetted with the serum from the PRF. Then we've got collagen, mem I mean a PRF membrane on top of that and then absorbable collagen membrane on top of the PRF. See everything is sutured. You can see just the tops of the implants. And it looks, like I said, a little gnarly at the time of the surgery, but it's like a, it's like a plant growing out of the soil. Over about three months, it looks ideal. So you see, you can see just the tips of the implants. So here's the maxillary implants after three months of healing. And here's the mandibular. Another case, extracting the teeth. This is a full mouth extraction with implant, small laminar implant supported full dentures. So we extract all the teeth, recontour the alveolus, alveoloplasty. Everything's nice and smooth and draw the PRF and so you want it balanced on each side of the centrifuge. You've got three over here and three over here. And we're gonna spin that for 16 minutes. Then you can see the PRF yellow clot in the top of the vial and then you separate the yellow from the blood clot and place it on the perforated tray. Then the implants are placed in the socket. Then the PRF is placed around the implants. Then the resorbable collagen membrane on top of that, sutured. And this is what it looks like at the time of surgery Then I'm placing on the mandible, I'm using some freeze-dried bone mixed with the PRF and then the resorbable collagen membrane on top of that. So you can see there are a number of ways to do this using PRF alone, freeze-dried bone alone, or PRF mixed with freeze-dried bone. And then you, I like to put a collagen, resorbable collagen membrane on top of that. So this is the mandible after the grafting. So this is mandible and maxilla and mandible. So you can see here's the max, maxillary small laminar implants after three months of healing. Here's the mandibular. Here's another case, extraction of the upper and lower teeth, placement of mandibular implants, small laminar implants, freeze-dried bone mixed with serial saline, resorbable collagen membrane and just poke holes in the membrane and it's stabilized by the coronal part of the small laminar implants. You want just the tips of the implants visible. This after three months of healing. Another case, placement of the implants at following full mass extraction. So you want the threads at the alveolar crest. And you'll, well, this is not a video on how to place implants. I've got some videos in Dentistry Master Classes on how to, how to do these cases. And like I said, I'm giving a seminar on this in Dallas, November of 2019. You can contact our office if you'd like to attend. Here's the serum from the PRF using that and the PRF cut up in the freeze-dried bone mixed with the serum packed around the implants in the sockets and then placing the PRF over the freeze-dried bone mixed with PRF as the membrane. You can see just the tips of the implants shining through. Three months later, this is the maxilla. Okay, in this case I'm extracting an upper first molar, upper left first molar, and I'm not placing an implant. We're going to place a fixed bridge. The reason we're placing a fixed bridge is because there wasn't enough vertical bone height between the alveolar crest and the floor of the sinus to place an implant without a sinus lift. So we, since these teeth had crowns already, the second molar and the second bicuspid, we elected to go with a fixed bridge. So I'm going to extract the first molar, the reason I'm grafting it, I don't want this area to be like a sway back horse. I want this bone level to be flat so the tissue's flat and it receives that pontic in a, a way that the patient can keep it clean and it looks natural. 
So the first thing I've done is prep, remove the crowns and prep the second bicuspid and the second molar for crowns before extracting the first molar. Then I've drawn the platelet rich fibrin and now I'm sectioning the first molar and this is how you, I've got a video on how to section the molar in the dental dentistry master classes and you section it by the roots. So see I've separated the palar root from the mesial buckle and the distal buckle root. Be sure to watch that video. You don't want to take this tooth out in one piece. If you do, you'll have to move it side to side and you'll lose the buckle plate which acts as a holder for the graft. So here are the three roots and then I'm mixing the platelet rich fibrin with the freeze dried bone. So here's the platelet rich fibrin mixed with the freeze dried bone covered with the resorbable collagen membrane and then a slab of the PRF, compressed PRF on top of that. And then that's sutured, you don't have to have primary closure. And then we placed a provisional bridge and left that for three months. This is after removal of the provisional bridge in three months. You can see how we've got a nice contour here because I contoured the gingival part of the, of the pontic of the provisional bridge to create an ideal gingival pontic receptor site. We took the impression I've got a whole video on this case and other ones, how to create ideal uh, gingival pontic receptor sites in pontics so you don't pack food. You want a ovate sanitary pontic. You can see the tissue blanching when the bridge is placed and the pontic contacts that uh, receptor site. Very important that it blanch. And here it is in place. See there's no space between the pontic and the tissue. Your patients won't really know to thank you for that, but they should because they're not packing food. See on the palo side, this is flat. So there's no embrasure space here, but you can get super floss through these contacts so you can floss it, but you don't want a big embrasure space over here. Otherwise, every time the patient eats, they're gonna think about you because that food's gonna pack into that embrasure space. Keep it flat on the palatal and the gingival sides. See, here's my graft area, my bridge. So you can see, even after the grafting, we've only got about five and a half millimeters of space from the alveolar crest to the floor of the sinus. So we would not have been able to place an implant without a sinus lift and bone graft of the sinus. So that's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time.